Hey, Dustin Tibbs with Jazz Wealth here. I'm a financial advisor. We help those of you that are just getting started. Maybe you have some sort of retirement account, 401k, some other Roth IRA somewhere, and you'd like to transfer it to Jazz to get some help. If you have an old 401k, we need to talk because that's not doing you any good there. I'm gonna do some videos on the fees that I've been finding in you guys' 401ks in the fine print, and so we'll cover that. But you need to get that rolled over and get back to contributing to it just like you did when you had the old job. It came right out of your paycheck. We could do the same here for you. Be sure to invest in yourself. Well, today I wanna to make sure you're not investing in a couple different things. There's been some really, really bad news coming out lately about mutual funds and some of the biggest mutual funds on the planet. So if you might happen to have mutual funds, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for this. The Fidelity Freedom Fund have been in the news a lot lately. Well, it used to be they were in the news because they were a great product. I mean, when people would call and tell me, hey, I have a Fidelity Freedom Fund 2020, target date, whatever it may be, um, I used to say that was pretty good. I would double check the fees for them, but most of the time that was a good fund. Why? Because they used to do better than almost every other mutual fund out there. In fact, for going back for a couple decades now, uh, 12 years to be actually perfectly you know, clear, um, they have outperformed almost 90% of all of the other mutual funds out there was a great product. Well, that's changing now. We're really starting to get under the surface of some of these mutual funds and the changes that they're making are quite scary. Here's what's happening. Money is moving away from mutual funds into exchange traded funds. They're almost exactly the same thing, but there's more flexibility in exchange traded funds and the fees are also a big part of it as well. So at Jazz Wealth, we only use exchange traded funds, which means we're not tied to any one company. We don't get any sort of commissions, kickbacks, any sales or trips to Barbados because we sold you a mutual fund. We get to do what's right for you using exchange traded funds. Well, the mutual funds are sort of frustrated by this because they're losing money, like $700 billion last year moved into exchange traded funds. That's starting to make them a little concerned. And like any good company, what they're doing is saying, well, we need to make our funds more attractive. One of the ways they're doing that is by beefing up the risk that they're taking in those mutual funds. That's not a good thing. Well, what they're doing at the Fidelity Freedom Funds is they're actually beefing up the risk in exchange for what they used to do. See, most of the target date funds had a preset allocation of stocks, bonds, and other investments. And what happened is when you're younger, you're taking more risk. As you get older, the risk starts to go more towards the interest rate stuff or bonds, things like that, that are historically more conservative. Well, in order to compete, what they're doing now is they're keeping that risk much higher and they're actually investing in emerging markets, the volatile emerging markets sort of opportunities and other stocks. So what it's doing is keeping you more at risk. Now, you don't notice this much right now because the markets have been doing great, but in February of 2018, we got a glimpse into what these funds are actually investing in and how sort of nasty it can get when the markets fall. Recently, what Fidelity has been doing in these funds is moving the investments away from what's made them great in the first place and into Chinese markets, uh, tech uh, investments, um, and other commodities that have been a losing, losing bet. Now, I'll give them the tech funds, right? The tech space has done really well, so that part they seem to have gotten right. But what they're doing now is they're trying to time the market. They're trying to say that we as humans know better than what the market will historically provide you and that's turning out to be pretty bad. Do you remember February? Early February 2018, the stock markets fell aggressively. In fact, the major indices had all their worst one day point drops ever in history. They have never ever done that, so a big huge drop. The sort of saying is that the bulls take the stairs, the bears take the elevator, meaning when a market goes up, it tends to go up slowly, just chugging along, everything's good, everything's good. But when things get scary, the markets fall really aggressively. And that happened in February. As an example, the Freedom Fund 2020, which is a target date fund for people that are gonna retire sometime in the next two years. Between January 26th and February 8th, when all that mess was happening, the Freedom Fund 2020 fell 6%, 6% right off the top. I mean, what takes you normally a year to accumulate in that little one and a half week time period 
fell 6%. It did worse than 80% of the other funds. Now this used to be a great fund, it used to do so well, and now it's one of the worst performers out there. Why? Well, you have two years left to retire, and they have over 60% of your investments in that target date fund in aggressive investments, like stocks directly, Chinese stocks, emerging markets that you know shouldn't be even in these funds. So they're getting in a little bit of trouble for doing this and trying to time what the market is gonna do. Now, normally that's not a problem. We can time the market if you want. It's a losing proposition, but you can do it. The problem is with mutual funds that have billions of dollars inside the mutual fund, when they make a change, they can't just change one day and it's all over. It takes them weeks, if not months, to shift the investments out of bad performing stuff and into good performing stuff. Well, February 26th to, uh, sorry, January 26th to February 8th, that's not a month, right? So in that meantime, while they were trying to shift and adjust, too bad, they missed it. They sold at the highs and bought at the lows for, uh, or sold at the lows and bought at the highs for the products that they were trying to move to. So very, very dangerous. There is no reason why a Fidelity 2020 target date fund or any target date fund on the planet should have that level of risk. Well, if you have one of those freedom funds, then you have that kind of risk. Well, maybe you say, I have the 2040 target date fund or I'm in that category, so I should have been fine, right? No, even worse. Your risk is even higher. So you lost almost 10% when the markets fell. Now, that's 2040, so you've got plenty of time left to retirement. That's about my target age of the people that I reach. So imagine that, you invested in Fidelity, you thought they're doing great, this is the company I wanna be with, and they cost you almost 10% because they thought they could time the markets and figure out how to better play your money. Oh, that's unfortunate. That fund was actually almost the worst performing mutual fund out of every other target date fund on the planet. Now it's not just Fidelity, you've got Wells Fargo and Vanguard doing the same exact thing. It's so bad at Wells Fargo that the Federal Reserve actually said, wait a minute, you guys, you're screwing everything up here. The Federal Reserve said, you can't take any new money. If you go to open a retirement account at Wells Fargo and try to put money into the fund, they have to turn you away. The Federal Reserve, they stepped in to say, you can't do any more new business until you fix your practices. The sad part is Fidelity is actually sticking by their new method. They're saying this isn't bad news, this is good news. We can time the market. We have the best traders on the planet. I can promise you that is not the case. There is no way this ends well for them. And so I wanted to give you guys a heads up. If you are invested in Fidelity mutual funds, some of these in particular, you need to take a double look at what you're doing. Make sure that you have the risk that you want. If you notice that it's a little skewed, you might wanna change. And of course, I know you think, oh, Dustin, you're trying to get me to switch to Jazz Wealth. Well, of course, <laughs> I hope you choose us. We'll use exchange traded funds. But if you don't, please consider looking somewhere else. Take five minutes and look at your investments. See if there's a better opportunity for you. If you're not sure if there is and you're at the end of your rope, you have no idea, you can't even read the papers that they send you, let me take a look. I won't charge you for it. I will point you in the right direction. If it happens to be Jazz Wealth, great. If it doesn't, at least you know you're running away from excess risk. Take it, Satch.